Hey crafty friend, it's Amanda with Pear Blossom Press and today I'm celebrating my husband Micah's birthday. I wanted to make him a fun little light up card. Now I've made a card sort of similar before where I lit up the sunset and he said it was one of his favorite cards. That one was flat. This time I decided to step it up a notch and make it a box card. And we're going camping for his birthday. He loves the, the mountains and the wilderness. He also loves the desert. <laughs> so anyhow, I, I decided to create a fun little light up scene. So let me show you what you'll need. You'll want a one light to light it up. You need some double thick foam tape. If you just have regular foam tape, Use two layers because we, we want to just elevate one of the panels so that it's the same thickness as the battery. You do need a stamp that will say push or press, something like that to indicate where to push the button. And then I'm using this fun little set. I've had it in my stash forever. It's got the sentiments that I'm using. Um, we want the box card die set and a couple of the different add-on pieces. I've also got the mountain add-on and I think the other one is called the park. Um, I use the grass from the park but you could reuse any of the other ones. We also need a flag tail banner and then I've got an eighth inch punch bringing out the old school tools here <laughs> and then I think that's a five eighths inch circle uh, punch we'll use at the end. To cut out my pieces, I grab scraps from my bin in a couple shades of green, blue, and gray, but they felt kind of plain. So off camera, I ink smushed them with Distress Oxide ink. I just kind of smashed it down on um, a mat and then spritzed it with water and then picked it up with the paper. That adds texture and a little more, Just it just kind of elevates the cardstock, makes it well, it's kind of ugly on its own, but it makes it really cool on the finished card. <laughs> it's kind of like pattern paper, but not really. Um, and then you can see I'm laying out the different dies that I'll cut out with that. We do need to cut the box separate. And that grass die that I used, you could just reuse any of the other struts. You want to cut it off to be the water, so it'll be straight. I did grab a piece of like a light color craft scrap that was in my box um, to cut out the banner. I also cut out the back panel and then from white cardstock I cut out the snowy hilltops for the mountains. And then off camera I ink blended this fun little background for the sunset. And I just made sure to start the sun kind of slightly lower than where the mountains will be. And it does not have to be anything fancy. You're hardly going to see it. You just need light color for the sun and then fade out to the dark stars around it. Now, before we start assembling, we need to do a little bit of stamping. So uh, those three pieces are what we're going to stamp. I'll start with the back panel and then I'm going to grab out my first sentiment. And please don't report me to the authorities, but I practice stamp surgery without a license all the time. <laughs> If a stamp, if it doesn't say what I want it to say or, you know, too much, too little, whatever, I, I'll, I'll cut it apart. I have no problem with that. <laughs> so I went ahead and cut that sentiment apart there. I'm just going to line it up on the back panel and then I can pick it up with my, the lid of my Misty. And those corners, those, um, the magnetic corners from Misty, those are nice too. But I do want to make sure to move it out of the way because sometimes they're a little taller than my stamp. So um, I'll use the original bar magnet that came with the Misty there a little further away from this stamp. And then I will just go ahead and double stamp it so I get a nice uh, bold sentiment there. And I'm not giving it a ton of pressure. It's always better with words to stamp twice than it is to smash it down and make the, the letters illegible. Then for the banner, obviously that banner is much longer than the Make-A-Wish sentiment that we're going to use, but that's okay. I'll show you how to trim it down. That's why I have the die still out. So I'm going to justify it over towards the left side of the banner in the Misty. Make sure it's straight, and then I'm going to stamp this guy a couple times as well. Now I'm using Distress Oxide ink. You can throw clear embossing powder over the top if you want it to be raised and shiny, but I, I'm not really going to mess with these for a while. I'm going to give them time to dry um, after I trim this down. So here's my trick for trimming down banners. You've probably done this yourself. Line it up. Look at how much space you have between the first letter and the left side, and then slide your die over and make sure that you have roughly the same amount of space on the other side. And then that way your sentiment is nice and even between the, um, the flag tails. And then I can just 
run it through the die cutting machine again. All I really need to do is cut off the edge, but that works out great. And then we want to stamp push on the, um, the background there where the sunset is. So I'm going to grab out the stamp and I'll put this guy in my Misty, but I need to figure out where to put it. Um, I want to make sure that it ends up being under the, um, or on top of the button. So I've grabbed my one light. I put the battery in. You can see that the, the button is on the lower right side and the light is up in the uh, center of the top. So I just line it up on the panel, stick the stamp on top of the button. Then when I close my misty door, I can pick up the stamp and I know it's going to be in the right spot. I prepped it with, or uh, prepped the panel with an anti-static powder tool. That way I can stamp it with Versamark ink and emboss it with white powder. And I'll have a nice little white sentiment there. I'll melt it with my heat gun real quick. <laughs> And then that way we'll know where our uh, light, the button will be on the card. So I'm gonna start laying this out, um, lining things up. If you've assembled a box card before, it gets really straightforward from here on out. I will show you how I kind of hid the battery and I'm gonna punch a hole. And then there's a bonus at the end. If you've ever made these little short cards before, they don't quite fit an envelope perfectly. So I, I have a hack at the end. Okay, so here's where I decided I want to put the top portion of my background, the sunset background. Um, I want the top portion directly covering my light, but I need to elevate the bottom portion because the battery sticks up. So I've laid it out. You saw me just kind of eyeball the spacing with my little trimmer. And this way I can um, cut, separate the top and the bottom portion. Now I use my pokey tool to mark where the light bulb is actually going to sit on the top part. And then I punched it out with that eighth inch hole punch. And now you can see when I stack it back up like this, the, the top portion of that panel can sit right over the light bulb and the bottom can be elevated. Okay, so now we are going to start assembling the card. And for these box cards, I like to go through and get all of my folds reinforced first, make sure that everything's nice and straight. Um, when I fold these over, I try to make sure that the, um, the edges are parallel with, uh, you know, the front and the back are all parallel. And then for the little tabs on the inside, you don't really need to reinforce those with the bone folder because they might um, adjust a little bit. So I just kind of give them a gentle fold to start. Now I am going to take the, the front and back and glue just one, one of the tabs to the other side at this point so that we can work with the rest of it while it's still flat. And I prefer wet glue for this. You can use the double sided adhesive that works great, but you don't get the wiggle room. So for me, I, I'll spend a little more time on it with wet glue just so that I know I can get everything lined up nicely and move it around a smidge if I need to. While it's flat, I'm going to glue the back panel on and two of those little trees. And I decided to glue the two trees down at the bottom um, where so it'll actually be touching the green border. And that way it kind of mimics the front of the card where the trees are just coming out from the sides. They're not separated. And I wanted to kind of carry that through to the back. So both of those green trees are down at the very bottom of the craft colored panel. And then now we can place our light. So to figure out where the light is actually going to be adhered to the green card, I'm going to use a pencil to mark through the hole. And then I hovered my pencil over the push and uh, marked it with the pencil there. Now I can use some double stick tape on the back of my light. You can use wet glue too. You just have to wait for it to dry. Um, and I'm lining it up with those two pencil marks. So I, I needed to move it over just a smidge so that my background would be centered on the green panel between the folds. And then that's great. Now I can glue the top portion of that ink blended panel down flat and I'm gluing it right on top of the light and the the light bulb is coming through the hole. Now this is where I bring in the double thick foam tape 
And this is our world's best double thick foam tape. I'm very excited about it. It is um, repositionable for 30 minutes. It'll become permanent overnight. And it's the right thickness for light up cards and for shakers. But I'm just gonna put some on either side of the battery and then I can stick that panel on top of it. And now you can see I can push the button, but the back allows the maximum amount of light to come through because the, the light bulb itself is pretty much poking through that hole. Okay, now the rest of this goes together like a regular box card. So before I glue the mountain strut in place, I'm going to add the little snow caps. And notice that for the ones that are on the fold, the mountains that are on the fold, I'm not adding glue beyond the fold line. I, I don't want um, to have to fold over the white portion because then it's doubled up. Any Anything extra at a fold line is a hindrance. So after I get these glued in place, I'm going to fold those two edges back and then trim off the extra portion of those white snow caps there. And that just allows this card to move freer and to glue down flatter and, and easier. So now I will line it up and I'm gonna make sure that we're mostly covering the sun, but the light is just kind of peeking through between that valley there. And then I can, once I figure out how high up to put it, I'll add some glue just to the left side of this strut. And when I hold it down, again, I'm using the wet glue for the same reason um, so that I have a little bit of wiggle room. I'm gonna hold it down, get it started, and before it's completely dry, I will uh, fold it over and make sure that the bottom edge of the strut is parallel with the bottom of the card. And I can adjust it if I need to. And you saw me just kind of close it up a little bit just to test it, make sure that I like the way it lines up through the window in the front. And then now I will put the lighter green uh, strut across and it's gonna move more um, toward the front of the card. So when I glue it to the, the side there, it's gonna be closer to the left and it's gonna be down slightly. And again, once I glue it down, I give it a second to start bonding and then I make sure that the bottom edge is parallel to the bottom of the card. And then I'm gonna bring in the blue and the medium green pieces here. And I wanna line them up so that you're only seeing the blue um, in the valley between the two levels of grass there. So I kind of lined it up and I'm again moving it more toward the left of the card so that it will be more forward and it's down a little bit lower so each level is kind of stair stepping down. And then for the front layer it's not coming all the way up to the edge of that fold. We still have at least a quarter of an inch between the, um, the fold where the window is and the step itself and I'm down closest to the bottom, not all the way to the bottom, but very close. And then before I seal it up, I wanna glue some more trees to the scenes and it's easier while everything is still flat and accessible to glue those pieces in now. I don't want them all the way over to the edge. I wanna get them a little more centered on the uh, struts because otherwise you won't see them through the window if you have them too far to the left or right. So I'll put two on that front strut and then one more on the back green one. And each time I kind of close it up and make sure that I like the way everything looks through the window. I'm looking at it through the window as I go. And now I'm happy with this. So I'm gonna add glue to the tabs on all four of those struts at the same time. And then I can close the uh, right side of the card up. And I'll give it a second I want it to adhere, but I also want wiggle room. If I need to adjust those, I will do that. And now because the back panel has that double thick foam tape down at the bottom, that makes it so that this card is really gonna go together and only lay flat to the, in this case, to the left side. So when you're doing this, you're gonna find that whenever you add a lot of bulk to a box card and you glue it flat to one side, it's gonna like to lay flat just on that one side. In the other direction, it's gonna bubble up on you. So this card will lay flat as long as I push it to the left um, and it'll pop up nice and square when it's open.
So one more thing here, I'm going to add the Make-A-Wish banner across the top. I was auditioning it in both the top and the bottom to see where I liked it. <laughs> and ultimately I decided at the top. And after I get that lined up, I'm going to push the button and realize that I don't that I can I can see the light a little too much. It doesn't really show up on camera, but from the top angle, you can see that light bulb. So that's where I grabbed that 5 8 inch circle. I grabbed a little uh, scrap of vellum that I've actually colored yellow with um, a Copic marker, but you can use pretty much anything and it could even be white, but I wanted it to look like the sun. So I, I went with yellow and then I'm just going to dab some glue on it and glue it right on top of the light bulb, just kind of centered around the light. And then that way, when you're looking at it, you can kind of see the, the yellow vellum sun, but when you push the button, well, I'll show you that it flattens out, <laughs> but when you push the button, it glows nicely. I think this is really cute. It's a masculine card, so it's not too cutesy, but you know, it works and I, I know my husband's going to love it. Now, when I went to put it in an envelope, this is, this is the downfall of these. So welcome to the bonus. <laughs> um, here's my trick for this. Go ahead and seal up your envelope and like all the way across at the top, like you would normally and then trim it down. So I, I've got it so that it's just a smidge taller than my card itself. And if there are any little bits and pieces, depending on the type of envelope you use, you may need to add a little more glue. You still want the top to be able to open like a canoe. And then the same thing for the uh, top portion of the envelope, seal it up, but you still want it to um, open like a canoe as well. Okay, now remember these old school paper crimpers? You'll be glad you didn't throw yours away. <laughs> Take the bottom portion, roll it through, and then that shrinks it up a little bit so that from the left and right, it's a little bit thinner, and then your top will fit on top of it. Now, it does make it like the exact size of the card in this case, so you're going to kind of stretch it a little bit the first time you put your card in, but your card will slide in, and then you put the top on it, and then you can wrap like a, a ribbon around the top to tie it off. It looks like a little present. I think that's a great way to handle the envelope situation on these guys. So I'm so glad that you joined me. I'm going to go get some pie and share my husband's birthday with him. If you're new to the channel, feel free to click subscribe and ring that bell. I've got some more videos for you. And as always, my friend, thanks for watching. <laughs>